Every day before we meditate, we spread thoughts of goodwill to ourselves and to all living beings. And it's important that we do this each time we meditate, because this is what takes us out of our ordinary, everyday narratives about what this person said or that person said or what you said to this person or that person or what you did. You start thinking about the world at large. The Buddha said we saw the world at large. It was like a pond with the water drying up, drying up, and the fish are struggling to get that last little bit of water. Of course, they're all going to die, and yet they fight each other again and again. It gave rise to a strong sense of sanguega. And so our goodwill for being should be tinged with that sense of sanguega. This is what makes it easier to settle down and meditate. You realize that all the stuff that people struggle for and fight one another over is just going to be lost. And what do they have left? Well, they have the karma of having struggled and fought. You decide you want to get out of all this. Make, there, make sure there's one less fish and that you're not going to be involved in the struggle. That puts you in the right frame of mind to meditate. You look at the affairs of the day, what this person said, what that person said, it all becomes very small, very minor, not worth getting upset about. So that when thoughts of that sort do arise in your meditation about what someone did to you or what you did to someone else, you can say, hey, this is just part of a much larger picture. And this is the kind of stuff we want to get past. That makes it easier to cut away a lot of the distracting thoughts that come up. So make sure you take this larger perspective each time you meditate. Take a few breaths to stop. Even if you have just a few minutes to meditate, just stop for a brief moment and think about the whole world. Goodwill for everybody. And then equanimity for everybody, realizing that no matter how much you want people to find happiness, it's going to have to depend on them. There's a lot of areas where you can't really help, so you have to let things go. And that makes it easier to let things go as you sit down and meditate. It also makes the meditation much less an issue of your trying to straighten out your own mind just for your own sake. And makes it part of the larger picture. Here is at least one more person in that long line going back to the Buddha, people who want to find a way out. And that's much a more much more inspiring role to have than to be one of those fish struggling for that last little bit of water. Of course, after the last little bit of water is gone, what do they have left? Nothing. But the people who find the way out, they have something of real value. The Buddha called the heartwood of the Dharma. So it's up to you to decide which role you want to take on. And as we meditate, we're part of that role set, setting out. So we don't have to be fish anymore. We don't have to struggle over diminishing resources all the time. We find a happiness that doesn't have to depend on any resources at all. That's the place where you're totally safe.